Hello and welcome to India's coolest online chat show, Chai with me, Lakshmi. Check us out at www.chaiwithlakshmi.in for fabulous webisodes, articles, tea time recipes and tea destinations. We're also on Facebook and Twitter. That's facebook.com forward slash Chai with Lakshmi. And on Twitter, you can tweet to us at Chai with Lakshmi. Today's topic is citizen participation. What does citizen participation mean to a democracy as ours? What does it mean to you and me as citizens? Here's a conversation on this with Swati Ramanathan, co-founder at Janagraha Center for Citizenship and Democracy. Swati and her team are working to make it easier for individuals like you and me to engage with local authorities and improve the quality of our urban lives. Through the use of the internet, they help us become less of spectators without necessarily becoming activists. Change can happen, as they say, one click at a time. If you think of a democracy, then it has to run with a whole, hundreds and thousands of us actually getting involved. If you look at all of the developed democracies uh, which have vibrant uh, cities, they've actually been, been built not just by government engaging, but thousands of citizens engaging in their neighborhoods, in small community projects, in looking after the you know, old age homes, making sure that with government itself, you actually have these amazing town hall meetings where they present their budget and say that these are our priorities and each priority and each sector has a citizen uh, voice in it as well and they do voting so you have the community kind of turning out and having a voice at the decision making table in today's India mm. if you're asking me to give time to participate I need two things one is you need to make it really easy for me yeah don't make make me become an activist you know giving up endless time mm. I mean I want to watch Sachin Tendulkar make another century. I want to take my kids for a movie. I have work to yeah. do. I have to drop my yeah, kids yeah, to school. Yeah. And working that. hours are long now. And then the traffic. And that's where the beauty of the internet and what's been happening over the last five years were incredibly best. First of all, the access to information like never before and the ability to free ourselves of this coordinated time. You can actually participate now if you have the appropriate platforms through online mediums at your own time, at your own convenience. Can you give me an example of one of these online platforms? So let's say, you know, somebody who's watching this wants to actually say, okay, I'm, I'm willing to take 10 minutes out today and do something. We decided to launch a campaign. Actually, this was just pre uh, Anna Hazari and all of that phenomenon, a pre 2G scam, August 15, 2010. We launched this pro campaign uh, online platform called ipaidabribe.com. It's not about wholesale corruption. It's not about what the big ticket corruption, and mm. that's what we call wholesale corruption. It's actually about the small, what yeah, we call what you and I corruption. would be paying to get things done, exactly. to get things moving, or would, would be asked to. On a daily basis, yeah. right? But Indians are confronted for every little thing with government. Mm. And, you know, to say if I want to get a driver's license, if I want to get a birth certificate, a death certificate, my father has died and I have to get insurance claims, if I want to get my land registered, we've crossed over a million hits. Which was, I mean, I mean, we thought it was unbelievable. We have over 20,000 so reports, okay, real live reports. So you can actually do, we, say, we took a slightly humorous look at it. We said, find out the market price of corruption. So if you're paying 10,000, find out what the other person, person paid. Maybe you're getting cheated in your corruption. Wow. So you can actually <laughs> click on that and you can say, what is the going rate for corruption on land in this particular area? Ouch. And you'll get a number to say this is the range. You know, that's, that's good to know that, OK, my neighbor paid less and therefore I can pay less too. Yes, definitely. I mean, sorry to say it that way. Yeah. But the other thing is, if there's a small number of people and usually people who are taking a stand against corruption seem to be outnumbered. So if we're talking about those refugee individuals who are openly taking a stand against corruption, if they have a platform like this where they also find that, okay, yeah. there's a whole community out there and I'm not alone and I, you know, I have support in taking a stand against corruption, perhaps a platform like this helps them reach out and voice what they feel, A. Number two, feel that they're not alone. Mm -hmm. Number three, engage in something bigger. Mm -hmm. That's beyond the individual level, which is where I yeah. think participation comes yeah, in. Exactly, right? exactly. I think that this is the biggest thing that this I pay to bribe, for example, does. It actually creates a network where in the past it was all anecdotal stories of saying I had to pay this and I had to pay that. You don't really know what is the size, what's the geography of this kind of thing and how can I resist? Mm. 
and suddenly when you create a network like this you feel like you're part of a large national community who's at least chipping in yes even if i've paid i feel mm. it's a bit of a confessional for me to come mm. on this platform and say i had to do this and you know i feel really bad about it and this is how much i paid and i want to at least tell you guys mm. that this is what's going on in our country mm. and then you take the courage to say let's wipe the slate clean and next time onwards i resist mm. and i resist because of the other point you made yeah. which is that the 10% um. of those 2000 reports are of people who have resisted and they have shared their stories now if i am asked for a bribe i actually go into those and see how have others mm. resisted yes. and i take courage from stories where people have resisted to say you know what and i've actually got reports there saying that after seeing ipa bribe i think let me just wait and see even if it takes 4 months i'm okay i'm no hurry for this so let me just keep on seeing how many times they keep asking me for this and i'll keep on giving them whatever documents they want mm. and let's see what happens mm. so i think there is a network effect that happens in this social platform that mm. has been created where you don't feel alone and you mm. feel part of a very large sort of a movement my question to you is from a standpoint of someone who's initiated i paid a bribe okay who believes in citizen participation how do you think something like that online let's say i paid a bribe itself translates mm -hmm. what will be the action that comes out of it in the future apart from at the, at an individual level so first of all i think that a platform like this does more than just saying root out you know 20 lakhs or whatever it is but actually starts awakening a certain consciousness within us about our value systems second thing it does is for the good guys within the system it allows them to create systemic change to say the processes are all flawed the institutional structures need improvement let's plug the loopholes where corruption takes place and then you actually have permanent change change and i think we've already begun to see that in karnataka we've had some tremendous officers who actually said this has empowered us and they've created change thank you for joining us thank you lakshmi it was a pleasure Well, I think you and I should go check out I paid a bribe. It's time that you and I are direct participants in India as it changes. Thank you for joining me on this webisode.